Uh, hello, everyone. Um, thanks for uh, coming in to, uh, to this talk. Um, I'm Ben Chad. I'm one of the senior technical account managers at Acquia. Uh, and I'm here to talk to you about the experience that we had earlier in the year um, you know, doing enterprise um, hosting and consultancy for the Commonwealth Games. Uh, so the title of my talk is Success at Scale, Preparing Drupal 8 for Large Events. And yeah, you know, my plan for today is really just to share with you um, some you know, stories that we had um, with getting Drupal 8 ready for large scale hosting, um, things that we did that worked well, you know, some things that we might do differently in the future. Um, but yeah, please do feel free to interrupt with questions at any time. I'm, I'm very happy to make this a conversation, and um, you know, I, I am just mindful that you know this is a, a topic that's really dear to my heart, and um, I've spoken about it so much internally at Acquia that I, I might sometimes forget that um, you know I'm, I'm talking to people who aren't familiar with all the, uh, the details about it. So um, thanks for having me at this Drupal camp. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to be here. It's always um, good to get an excuse to um, come and visit Singapore. Um, you know, I've, I've already introduced um, myself and my, my role. Um, you know, just to give you a bit of a bit of background on me, uh, I've been working with Drupal since 2010. Um, so if you think back to the Drupal timeline at that point. Um, that had me dabbling in Drupal 6, um, and yeah, that was a um, that that site that I worked on um, was was a lot of fun. Um, it was getting promoted by Stephen Fry all the time. Um, so I, I don't know if you're aware of him, but you know my my first experience with Drupal was high profile. Um, he is a comedian in the UK, um, and you know, even back in 2010, he had something like three million Twitter followers. Um, so whenever he would tweet about this particular site that I was working on, you'd, you'd get a stampede, and his media department would tell you that you know you'd, you'd count on something like 650,000 um, Drupal hits in an hour if he tweeted about your site. So. Um, that was always a bit of fun. Um, we, we made every mistake in the book with that site. Um, so, you know, it was nice to um, have a chance to, to fail quickly and have a do-over with uh, future um, iterations of what we're doing. Um, and I, I guess Drupal 7 is when I, you know, very first got my hands properly dirty um, working with Drupal and have never looked back. Um, I joined Acquia um, as a member of the UK team in 2015. I've been working as a, a technical account manager ever since that time, and I'll, I'll tell you, you know, a little bit more about that on the next slide. Um, but I had the good luck to um, relocate with the company um, uh, back home and to, to Sydney uh, in 2017. So um, yeah, you know, as I said before, I'm just here to chat about the experience that we had um, hosting the 2018 Comp Games. Um, now, I, I I don't want to talk about me and Acquia too much, um, but just so that you know the viewpoint that I'm coming from, I'm going to tell you about my job role um, a little bit. And then you know that that's going to reflect the support that we were trying to give um, Commonwealth Games. What we contributed was enterprise hosting and strategic group consultancy. Okay. Uh, at at Acquia, we don't do site builds, or well, we we can, but um, we we generally have customers bring their own sites, um, and you know we we prepare them for the. Um, delivering at scale side of things. Um, with the Commonwealth Games, the, the engagement was primarily driven out of um, my department. Um, and I, I actually had the good luck to um, have a bit of a team who worked with me on this engagement. Um, if you're not familiar about um, what a technical account manager type role um, would do, um, where 
we're effectively business focused Drupal consultants. Um, we're, we're motivated by customer success. So we're, we're just trying to do everything possible to help the customer uh, achieve their digital goals. We're there to maximize value in Acquia products and services and just act as a gatekeeper and ensure that the customer is using the product in the right way. And, you know, um, the, the key headlines that I'm going in the very first time or two that I meet a customer, uh, I'm saying things like I want to support, guide and protect the investment you're making in the digital platform. Um, so the Commonwealth Games Organising Committee, um, known as Goldock, uh, they built and operated the site. Um, they they did the initial build with uh, Sapient Razorfish, and then uh, took it in house and managed it themselves. Um, but yeah, Tams were there to act as a voice of reason, and we spent 28 days with the customer around the event. Um, now that's going to sound excessive, um, but when I start, you know, showing you um, sort of traffic levels that they had to deal with, um, it, it ended up being ab about the right thing. So, you know, I, I would think that um, in this part of the world, you know, most of you are familiar with the idea of what the Commonwealth Games is. Um, whenever I was talking to people in headquarters, being a US company, I had to, you know, go right back to the start. Um, and I'd be saying things like, um, you know, the, the Commonwealth Games is like the Queen's Olympics. Um, you know, it has 70 teams made up from 52 member states. So, you know, you get things in the Com Games where you know, the United Kingdom split out and competes for different teams, etc. Um, you know, six and a half thousand athletes and officials. But where things really start getting interesting to me is when you start thinking about what the global coverage of this is like and what that starts translating to by the time you get to Drupal page views and infrastructure and what the impact of that is. Um, so as a, as a strategic consultant, um, as soon as I see things like you know, 1.5 billion global audience, <laughs> you know, I'm starting to get you know, a bit sweaty at that point. And I'm telling my wife, oh, I've just been handed this new assignment at work and it's, it's going to be highly visible and a bit tricky. Um, and, you know, when you, when you hear that you're going to have 100 million page views during games time or 100 million page views over what's roughly a 10, 11 day period, um, yeah, that's, that's quite a lot to, um, to handle. Um, you know, I, I can remember, you know, strictly from the pure developer days, um, you know, handing, handing my manager um, a, a unit of work or a piece of functionality that, um, that worked and did the job um, was a, a very different problem to um, handing my manager a, a unit of work that had been load tested out and, you know, proved to be a success. Um, so we knew that we had a lot of due diligence to do to um, get the customer ready for this event. Uh, so the, the success story, here's the bit that I, I love. Um, and you know, it, was, it was great to be able to say this with a sigh of relief after the event. Um, so in, in an 11 day period, um, what we were able to deliver out of um, Drupal, um, a, a result site built in Python and then Acquia Hosting was um, we delivered 3.9 billion requests um, visited by 8.4 million unique visitors at the Acquia Managed Edge. Um, we, we exceeded projections on um, Drupal capacity needed. Uh, we served out 110 million plus Drupal page views. Um, and the, the only way that we were able to achieve that was by um, being really aggressive about our caching rates. And you know, when I'm sort of thinking of the story that I'm going to start telling in the next couple of slides, it's mainly about caching and um, how we made caching fly. Um, you know, operationally, it went off 
really well. Um, we, we didn't have um, too many glitches at the time. Uh, there was zero downtime, um, and you know, I've got some of um, Aquia's support team sitting here with me today. Um, they didn't see this customer at all in a critical capacity during the event. There was, um, there was no tickets for that at all. Um, and you know, it was really good to be able to say at the end that there was um, yeah, one very happy customer. Um, they, they, they felt validated in their choice of Drupal. And you know, that, that to us is a great story. That's what we're trying to achieve. So I, I won't show you the full video here, um, but a, a colleague of mine put together this cute little visualization of what the, the traffic looked like. Um, so it, it's, it's a bit like playing Tetris, right? On the, the right hand side over here. <laughs> I can't stop it. Um, on the right hand side there's script names and um, each one of those balls coming across represents a, a request to that and then this sort of Tetrisy paddle um, represents you know, the web server you know, knocking a request off for that or the um, CDN knocking a request off. Um, now Sean must have started putting this together, this data together at the start of the day because you know, it, it looks quite tame at the moment when you start thinking in that way. Um, now, if I fast forward a couple of minutes into this, it starts getting a lot hairier. Okay, and if you're playing that Tetris paddle, <laughs> you're moving, you know, really, really hard to um, serve all those requests. And then, if I jump forward to the right place a little bit later in the morning. It just goes so it's it's on fire, and um, you know it, we were uh, we were keeping an eye on um, you know concurrency of requests as they would come in on the dashboards that we uh, had set up with the customer, um, and and yeah, around critical events in the com games when there was high media interest, that's what it really looked like, um, and you, you you don't achieve uptime at that sort of level. Um, so if, if I start thinking about um, the path to success, uh, this is not meant to be an Acquia infomercial at all. Please don't think that it is. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just listing out what they used and you know, why they used it. Um, we did make a decision um, to use best of breed software and infrastructure um, you know now obviously because of where I come from um, you know it's going to be influences to um, what we use uh, for um, Drupal development um, they started off with Acquia BLT and Acquia Lightning um, I, I could I just get a quick show of hands um, who here is familiar with BLT and has downloaded and used it okay um, yeah, not many. Um, it's it's worth checking out next time um, you you start on a Drupal project. Um, I guess it it's short for build and launch tools, um, and it, it's just a, a good framework, uh, especially when you're working in teams uh, for you know setting up some um, dev consistency um, and I guess just enforcement in practices to um, what your delivery pipeline might look like. Um, so you know, if, if you've got that recalcitrant developer in your team who is um, always refusing to put git, message, git commit messages in, um, yeah, BLT will enforce that you can't do that. Um, and it, it, it does other things like um, you know, automatic code linting and um, checking that you, you're pushing code up through the stages of the delivery pipeline properly, um, which is good. Um, they used Lightning as a, um, a base Drupal distribution. Um, you know, we, we find that that's really good in um, media heavy type situations. Um, and you know, we have dev teams reporting back to Acquia that um, 
it saves them about 20% of the time in a project if they use um, Lightning as a, a, a base Drupal distribution. Um, in terms of the CDN, we're, uh, we're big fans of Cloudflare at Acquia. Um, it, it's fantastic. I've, I've never worked with a, um, a, a piece of a hosting stack that is just so nimble and lets you um, roll changes out quickly. Um, if, you, if you ever have a chance to go and play with um, Cloudflare's um, free tier, um, you know, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, and you know, if I had to name one thing which was make or break in um, the success of the delivery here, it, it was Cloudflare without shadow of a doubt. We, we could not have achieved uh, that level of scale without them. Uh, they used uh, Acquia Cloud Continuous Delivery for the dev pipeline. Um, so if you haven't um, kicked the tires with Acquia Cloud in the last 18 months or so, um, we can now do um, on-demand environments, so effectively um, environments per pull request. Um, that was you know, a, a big win for them. Uh, and then, you know, of course, Acquia Cloud Enterprise for highly available and scalable Drupal 8 hosting. Um, one core value that we took into um, the engagement was value being pragmatic over textbook perfect. You know, if you think about it, a site like the Commonwealth Games, um, it, it only has to work for a two-week period, okay? We're not building um, we're not building a digital platform that has to last five years to get return on investment. Okay, um, it, it's just there, um, and it has to operate in a keep alive mentality for two weeks. Now that doesn't mean cut corners, um, but it, it does mean that um, as, as you're working as a developer, you don't have to invest in the future so much. Okay, if you've got um, yeah, it, if you've got a design decision um, that you can do as a quick win um, and you know it only has to work for a short period of time, yeah, you know, fantastic, do it. Um, and then obviously when you're, when you're up in that range of um, your 10, 10 billion Drupal bootstraps in a day, if it's cacheable, cache it. Don't make your infrastructure do that work again if you don't have to. Um, so what did caching look like for um, Gold Coast 2018? Um, well, I mean, to be, to be honest, caching is easy. Caching is really easy. Because as soon as Drupal um, generates a page view, you know, you run it through Varnish on the way out, and uh, Varnish will just suck it up and happily say, yes, I'll keep hold of that forever. <laughs> and I will serve that out indefinitely for you. All right. So what's the, the actual hard part of this? Why don't we do it all the time? Purging. Purging is really hard. Um, now, you know, to, to make life even tougher, think about all the different uh, caching layers that you have in place. Um, well, we've got you know, opcode cache and APC cache and mem cache and varnish and Drupal cache and CDNs and all this sort of ugly stuff. Um, where is markup sitting. Okay, markup is really sitting in potentially up to three places. Okay, you've got your Drupal cache and, and then you know, the, the more important ones from an infrastructure point of view, you've got mar, um, Varnish and then your CDN. Um, so certainly we had um, two caching layers upstream of uh, Drupal. Um, Acquia Cloud always has um, two varnish nodes um, sitting out in front of it. Um, you can hack things up so that they're active active if you uh, really want to. Um, for com games, we didn't feel the need to do that. We had them in an active passive configuration. So um, all traffic was one running through one varnish instance at a time. And we would only use the second one in a, a failover scenario. Um, but the job of Cloudflare as a CDN um, was to take a Ferrari and make it fly. Okay. We, we just couldn't have achieved the concurrency needed 
uh, for um, that level of hosting without a CDN sitting out in front um, you know, to, to act as an amplifier and get this um, yeah, message out globally. So, all right, you know, I've, I've got highly available Drupal, I've got Varnish in front of it, I've got a, you know, a, a global um, content delivery system sitting out in front of that. Um, how do I react and purge when editorial make content changes? Well, thankfully, um, Drupal 8 is the first version of Drupal where um, you know it's awesome at purging, and that ended up being enough. Using the power of Drupal 8 was um, you know, good enough in our case uh, because Drupal 8 and Varnish um, they had content TTLs of 30 days, which was great. Now, when you, when you think about me saying that the Com Games was a, a two-week event, um, that basically meant that once a page had been generated once and was sat in Varnish, um, barring an event which for some reason triggered a um, cache clear, um, it never had to be generated again, which was great. Okay. Um, so that obviously had cache tags, and that helps with the... Um, it, it almost completely solves that how do we get content out of um, Drupal's page cache and out of Varnish when we need to. Um, unfortunately, although Cloudflare do theoretically say that um, they do cache tags, they don't do a great job at it. Okay? Um, I, I don't know how many of you have actually looked at the, um, the tags that come out of Drupal 8. Um, but the, the list of tags can be immense, okay? Especially if you've got you know, very complex entities on a page, you've got a really long list there. Um, now, Cloudflare um, cannot support uh, cache tag headers any longer than 255 bytes. And Acquia only discovered this in anger um, while we were hosting the Australian Open earlier in the year. So, you know, we. That what I did with the Com Games was very much a, a replica of um, you know, a successful Australian Open uh, tennis tournament engagement. And you know, when you take that 255 byte payload that Cloudflare can support and you hash your tags down to you know, four byte tags and space to limit them, you've only got about 50 tags there. Okay. Now in, in the Drupal 8 world, um, it, it's very, very easy to get a Drupal 8 page which is going to spit out more than 50 tags at you. So um, for all intents and purposes, that meant that um, Cloudflare um, and you know, tag purging aren't compatible. And the, the solution was um, quite simple in the end, and we just set 60 second content TTLs at Cloudflare. Um, and you know, for our purposes, we didn't have to do anything more than that. Okay, because that meant that when an editorial change was made, uh, we only had to wait for a minute uh, for it to um, you know, work its way up through the system. Um, if, if editorial really minded um, about that 60 second delay, we could always manually purge the page out for them. Um, but we, we weren't doing any live results with Drupal or anything like that. Um, yeah, we're using horses for courses and Drupal was decided to not be the tool for the results. Um, so, you know, that ended up being sufficient rather than building a complex um, sequential purging mechanism on top. Now, you might think, you know, how does that work? Okay, how do we, how do we still survive on TTLs at the edge that um, are only one minute long? It still got us the magical nirvana of a 99.9% .9 cash uh, hit rate. Okay, um, and we, we were ecstatic when we realised that we were hitting that number on you know an operational level. So rule of thumb that um, the TAMs in Acquia tend to throw about is that 99% um, you know, cash hit rates are achievable 
you know, as long as you put some, some effort in and you know, a bit mindful about what you're doing, you can get there. But you add in the extra 9 and 99.9 .9 is hard. Um, so all that we did was we, <laughs> we did the achievable with two layers and you add them together and that gives you, you know, the element that's really hard. Okay. Um, and so you, you put those two layers together that are each contributing a 99% cash rate and we got that 999 combined rate. Um, now to prove that, um, I actually had to go back to my previous career before um, you know, being involved with Drupal and Acquia and um, I, I come from a, a mathematics background actually and, and I got out the old um, you know, first year probability um, rules and you know if you do the math um, and look at complementary events the probability of a miss is that thing which I wrote up okay so if you do the um, you know the 0.99s at two stages they multiply together and they give you that 0.001 percent which was great um, all right so we knew what our um, our caching infrastructure or our caching solution was going to look like. Um, but you know, we still needed to do a regular DevOps dance. And you know, what do I mean by that? Well, you know, every day we were, we were looking to see what, um, what URLs Cloudflare was pulling from our origin. Uh, why did we want to look at that? Um, outlier account outlier accounts represented infrastructure risk. Okay. If, if we knew that for some reason um, you know, the, the slash news page was, being, um, was, was hitting our Drupal backend you know, 10 times a second, um, something had gone wrong in the caching layer, something needed to be reset and we needed to work out why that page wasn't being cached. Um, and yeah, you know, we were just at, at the start of the of the event. Um, you know, we were going through this cycle, you know, up to two or three times a day, um, where you know the, the TAMs would come up with the list of worst vendors. We'd analyse why um, these weren't potentially being cached, and then we'd pardon me, um, pass it back to um, the Com Games uh, developers, and they would um, help us sort it out. It was usually files being put in funny locations that needed proper caching headers added. Um, you know, the, the original developers were, um, were I, I, I'd probably, um, <laughs> I didn't think how to word this politely. Um, their, their code hygiene wasn't always great. So they were putting assets in weird places and then when you think of um, the HT access directives, um, you know, they, they tell Varnish when to, to cache certain things and um, those directives are going to be based on file type or based on location in the doc root or that sort of thing. So um, we used to um, you know, have to adjust those. Um, we found that there was a lot of instances of um, endpoints being accessed by um, post requests instead of get. Um, now, if you've ever done any high-performance Drupal before, you'll, you'll know that that's one of the easiest wins that you can make. Right? Um, post requests generally aren't cacheable by um, you know, upstream um, proxies. So you know, if, you, um, if you've got a, a view that uses a lot of post requests, say for pagination, uh, replace it by gets, and um, the, the impact on your infrastructure is going to uh, reduce quite a bit. Um, we identified a self-denial of service attack <laughs> um, before it truly ramped up, and I'll talk about that on the next slide a little bit. Um, and we also wrote a tool uh, called Cloudflare CLI, um, which I'm pretty sure that um, one of my colleagues, um, Sean Hamlin, who may be known to some of you here, has made um, available as an open source project. Um, if he hasn't done that um, by now on GitHub, um, I know that he's planning to do so um, really soon. Uh, but 
that was a game changer for us. Um, if you've ever worked with Cloudflare logs, um, Cloudflare logs aren't the standard, you know, one line means one message thing that um, we're kind of used to in the DevOps world. Um, they return massive JSON blobs um, per request. Um, so, you know, the first part of Sean's tool was uh, effectively a, a filter and a formatter, um, which extracted out the uh, important payload from the JSON and turned it into syslog format. Um, but then, you know, he, he did a whole stack of fantastic analysis on top that let us identify what these worst defenders were. Um, okay, so cash tags, I, I fell in love with them during this engagement. Um, they're awesome, but they're not perfect. Okay, and it, it's almost gone the um, too far in the other direction from what Drupal 7 was. Okay, Drupal 7 was uh, very naive about knowing um, what sequential or dependent purging meant. And Drupal 8 can sometimes just be a bit too aggressive about it. If you purge a tag that is listed everywhere, okay, you are going to clear pretty much all of your caches and get stampede elements going on. Um, so the way that this presented for uh, Com Games was um, on their front page and then on landing pages, um, you know, they, they had lists of nodes where you know people would go to look, you know, maybe top news stories and things like that. And um, they were maintained by entity queues. As soon as a content manager went in and did a bit of drag and dropping on their entity queues, that would start sending Drupal requests through um, and you know Drupal would see that this end of the queue is being updated and it would dutifully identify that everything with the node list tag uh, should be purged. Okay. Well, <laughs> on an informational type site, um, you know, virtually everything had the node list tag. Um, so it, it didn't take very much drag and drop activity at all uh, for us to you know, pretty much lose the entire site out of um, warm cache uh, just by doing a bit of reordering of new stories. Um, so the pragmatic solution was to um, blacklist the node list tag. Okay? Drupal 8 does have a mechanism in the, the deep dark edges where you can tell it that when certain tags are invalidated, you know, actually don't, don't bother going and removing that from the upstream proxies. Um, now, what, what happens then? Um, you know, you, you have to, the organization that you're working with has to make a decision. How do you deal with the dependent content purging at that stage? Um, you know, for, for the com games, it, it wasn't a big deal, really, um, because the, the pages that they were um, updating with those entity queues, um, those updates didn't happen very often at all. Um, and they were quite happy just to deal with that manually. I remember we were only there for a, a two-week event. We just had to be um, you know, pragmatic and not flashy, and you know, doing the manual update was the way to go. Um, so, you know, if, if I start thinking about um, a few war stories and interesting things that happen, um, the self-denial of service, I think, is almost my most amusing one. Um, so, you know, I said that um, Drupal wasn't delivering results. We had, uh, well, Com Games had another partner. They had Atos in there who um, you know, specialise in that. They've got a product that they, um, you know, travel around with and tout um, at every major event like this. Um, but for some reason, which I didn't really understand, um, results borrowed markup from the www Drupal site. Okay, now um, if you're a cause wizard, you can you, you might be able to see what is coming next. Um, we certainly hadn't predicted this before um, we went into the event with uh, Com Games, and it was partly because, pardon me, we didn't have any uh, visibility into how results was built. 
Um, but yeah, they, they were borrowing markup from WWW. And for strange reasons, uh, that markup was being delivered as a JSON blob um, coming out of Drupal um, yeah, back to the, the results site. Um, but what happens then is that because this was a you know, cross-domain request, the browsers get a bit touchy about security. Okay. So um, yeah, w without getting too deep into it, the cause spec says that results has to make what's known as a pre-flight request back to www and say, am I allowed to make use of this resource? Okay. But the spec also says that this is strictly uncacheable. Okay, so it, it, it can give permission, but it can give permission as a one-time thing only. Now, you know, if you if you go back, if you've got a really good memory and you think of those numbers that I put up at the start, um, you know, over 11 days, um, you know, at, at this Acquia managed edge, out of what was coming out of Cloudflare, um, you know, results contributed about, you know, almost 4 billion, well, the, the combined total, sorry, was about 4 billion um, you know, page views out of the CDN, whereas Drupal only contributed about you know, 110 million of that. Um, what that meant was that for billions and billions of page views, even if they were cached out of the CDN, um, it was sending an uncacheable request um, directly to the Drupal infrastructure. And you know, that, um, that was just a risk that we couldn't accept, um, and you know, we, we had to find a way of um, mitigating that um, with the, the Atos team, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that we did. Um, but yeah, I, that, that was something that we only saw in the ramp up period to the games, you know, say in the, the five days ahead of the event, um, rather than um, you know, catching it right on time. Um, I'm sure that many people in this room were, um, you know, kept awake at odd hours dealing with Drupal Geddon 2.0. Um, I, I know I, I wasn't part of Acquia with Drupal Geddon 1.0, um, and I know that uh, Acquia took some criticism for um, there being a feeling that some of its employees had, you know, advance notice as to what was going on. Um, I can I can honestly tell you that with 2.0, um, you know, we had no internal knowledge as to what was going to happen. I um, I had exactly the same information that um, everybody in this room did. Um, and you know, given the nature of the event, that obviously uh, scared us. Um, and the Commonwealth Games had gotten themselves in a bit of a tangle of technical debt. All right. They had stopped upgrading their Drupal. Um, you know, too many releases prior, um, and a, ahead of the um, announcement or the, the pre-warning of Drupal again 2.0, they'd made a decision to accept the technical risk of um, running on an outdated version of Drupal. Um, yeah, and, and that was obviously, yeah, the thought of that was something else that kept me awake at night. Um, and then <laughs> when we knew what was coming out here, um, I had to go back to, um, I had to escalate it quite high into um, senior management at Com Games and just say, you, know, you can't go into this event uh, with an outdated version of Drupal. You know, you, you really, you, your developers might be saying that the combination of VLT and Lightning and um, Drupal 8.3 was just, making it impossible to get that upgrade done, um, but you, you need to find whatever resource um, is needed and pay whatever is needed to um, you know, get this upgrade unblocked. And you know, we, we finally got there, um, which was good. Um, but yeah, I mean, I remember that we, we all had to turn up at their operations centre at something silly like 3 in the morning to um, you know, ensure readiness for, for that upgrade coming about. Um, there was there was an interesting moment with um, regionalised live broadcast feeds. Um, now the folk at Com Games were normally a 
pretty honest kind of bunch. Um, but one of the product owners told a little lie. And the product owners assured his um, managers that he had built in capability where if people visited Slash Live, depending on where they were in the world, they would be sent to um, you know, the local broadcaster's live feed for that event. So you know, if you're in Australia, you'd get Channel 7. If you're in the UK, you'd get BBC and so on. And um, I remember you know, one of the developers coming up to me in a mad panic about three hours before the opening ceremony. And he said, um, our product owner um, deliberately hid a requirement from us and never told us about these live broadcast feeds. And Channel 7 and all the other executives are upstairs um, demanding to know where it is. And I was like, well, OK. I mean, um, you know, we, we've got country headers um, out of Varnish. You know, we can, we can tell you where you user's located. Um, but you've got three hours to do this, and you haven't thought about cacheability, have you? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. Luckily, there there was a um, a win out of this, and um, you know, I said to the guy, "Look, well, you know, as an Acquia Tam, I'm not allowed to deliver you code because if I do, I've got to own it and yeah, be, be responsible for it." for the rest of the time. Um, but if you leave me alone for um, an hour, I'm going to write it up for you, and then you're going to you know, look over my shoulder and see it on my screen and go and use it. And, and I was lucky, actually, because um, you know, I'm, I'm nothing special with very headers, but I'd, um, I'd solved a similar problem for another customer um, in, in recent time. So I, I knew the method and knew how to do it. Um, if you've never used a very header before in your life, uh, very headers are magical, magical, magical things. Um, you know, they tell proxies like Varnish um, how to look up a cached object using a key which is more complicated than just the URL. Um, so, you know, the, the very header in this instance was telling Varnish how to find a cached object based on the combination of URL and um, country code. Um, but there is one thing to be really mindful of when um, you're doing that in a Drupal 8 world. Um, while things like Varnish and Cloudflare or any well-behaved CDN um, are definitely going to obey a um, very directive, um, Drupal's page cache has no no um, notion of that at all. Drupal's page cache can only vary on you know, URL, essentially. Um, so we were we were lucky that we could um, achieve this effectively by um, using cacheable and variable um, Apache redirects. So you know, um, someone would visit slash live, um, and then without falling back to Drupal, Apache would redirect them off to you know, slash live slash au or slash live slash gb or whatever um, and still achieve that uh, cacheability um, yeah but have it have it done in a um, variable way sorry Um, yeah, and I, the other thing, um, I, I won't go into to massive detail about it, um, but we, we did um, start getting issues with the development pipeline um, close to the games. Um, you know, we all love config management, um, but these guys took config management to a completely new level. Um, and you know, had issues with our build containers and you know, why they wouldn't complete um, a build of a site in sufficient time before timing out. Um, and we had to have a, a serious conversation with them. You can't have 1,700 YAML files, okay? <laughs> if, 
if you're going to do config management, um, you, you've got to tame it down a little bit more than that. So, um, you'll be, again, we're that close to the event, we didn't come up with a, a long-term um, strategy around it. Um, but yes, as, as you're doing Drupal builds, um, yeah, just just be mindful that uh, config management is great, um, but you, know, you, you, you want to um, make sure that your um, config files aren't in too much separate them as well. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd yeah, love to open it up to questions, um, you know, interested in feedback from you guys. Um, yeah, just a, a quick shout out. Um, we are hiring in um, Southeast Asia at the moment. Uh, we've got open headcount for a um, solutions architect up here, which is a fun role. Um, yeah, if, if you'd like to know more about that, um, grab me today. Uh, my conscience is clear. I can go back and tell the people that I've, I've made that little infomercial for you know come and come and work with us and yeah have fun traveling around. Um, but yeah, um, please. Um, any questions about the event? Um, it was roughly a. Um, Nine month project, so they, they did it pretty quick. Um, yeah, they. Um, so I, I think th th there was always some minimal presence for the, the 2018 games after the 2014 games had finished, um, and they they had a, a rough and ready Drupal 7 site in play, um, but there was never any performance tuning or anything like that done with it. Um, they took on um, Acquia Technical Account Management in July of last year, um, and you know one of the first things that we did with them was help plan out this um, you know, Drupal 8 rebuild. Um, they would have pushed that live November of last year, um, and then um, you know at, at that point it was just a matter of um, you know, keeping it in operation and the the strategic consultancy side of things and making sure that um, you know they could keep up time on the infrastructure they had uh, that was really a, a three or four month engagement um, yes the whole Drupal component was so anything under www was hosted on Acquia cloud um, the results site um, was hosted on a, a custom Athos solution. Um, I, I think, to be honest, that they were even running their own bare metal and you know, putting stuff underneath it. Um, but yeah, we we are effectively a reseller of Cloudflare, um, and you know, we managed um, the Cloudflare side of things for both of those sites, so the, the non drupal site as well. Yeah, we did. Um, so, yeah, load testing as a consultant is something that I have um, a bit of a guilty conscience about um, because we always badger our customers into doing it. Um, but then, what that effectively means is that they they load test, but they don't understand the hypotheses that they're testing for, or they don't quite know how to interpret the results either. Um, so I, I think they, they did do load testing. Um, I don't think it was entirely um, representative of what was going to happen come the games period. Um, but the load testing that they'd done was certainly enough to convince me that they had you know, misengineered anything to the point where it wasn't going to perform very well. Um, and if, if additional infrastructure was needed, um, you know, for a two-week period, it, it, it's not going to cost that much. I mean, when, you, when you're looking at a contract, the value of what they had anyway, if we'd had to you know, double the size of their databases and you know, multiply their webs by four, you know, the, the additional spend wouldn't have broken the bank.
the solution. Ah, okay. Um, the solution was to effectively take cores out of the equation. And this was where Cloudflare was beautiful. Okay. So um, I had a, a page rule set up in Cloudflare that whenever requests for um, whenever the request for oh, let me get this straight. Right. The resource was sitting on dub dub dub. It was coming from requests. I had to ask the team who owned requests to um, make the markup ask for it from requests. Then in Cloudflare, whenever there was a request for that endpoint, I rerouted it down to dub dub dub. All right. So as far as the browser was concerned, there was no cause activity going on, but we'd just done a bit of intelligent rerouting at the CDN level, um, which enabled them to get the resource from the original place. And, and that sort of thing is one of the reasons I love Cloudflare. It's um, it's fantastic at letting you do that, and you know you, you hear all sorts of stories with other CDNs that start with A, um, where to get that functionality enabled, um, you have to jump through a lot of hoops. Yeah. Um, very little. Um, the the only integrations that they had, um, yeah, all happened at the front end anyway. So um, you know, Drupal didn't have to worry about managing that data, um, nor was it really hit from an infrastructure point. Yeah. Um, yes, we did. Um, but I, I guess that was more of a, um, a CDN type issue. Um, but we, we always knew that that sort of thing would happen anyway. And from an Acquia point of view, that's part of the value proposition of taking on a CDN where you can um, minimize that. You know, um, yeah, for something like Com Games, um, yeah, without wanting to generalize, but say um, yeah, in Africa, a, a lot of the content is going to be downloaded um, you know, by slow 3G connections and mobile phones. Um, and you know, there's all sorts of smarts in Cloudflare where um, yeah, that, that can be minimized. So um, yeah, that, that's a win for sure. Right. Um, we did, but only for disaster recovery purposes. Um, so I've, I've been given the, the roundup now. Um, but yeah, feel, feel free to catch me in the tea break and I'll tell you how that works. Okay, thank you very much.